Okay, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be working on a more advanced version of the blockchain. And if you've seen my previous video series, the way we had originally defined a blockchain was in terms of a list of blocks. So that's this graphic at the bottom here. We had a block and then another block and then another block. And when we wanted to access the previous hash, so the hash of the block before the, the whatever block we're talking about, we would actually go to the previous item in the list, calculate its hash, and then use that result. Now this is okay, but it's not really realistic and there are some problems with it because that would mean we'd have to rehash every single block when we want to calculate the correct hash of the block we're currently looking at. So, so let's say this block, the data was changed to say something else. That would mean that this hash changes, which means that this hash changes, which should mean that this hash changes because it depends on this. And so we'd have to recalculate all of that in order to find it. But in this video, what we'll be doing is we'll be defining a blockchain such that each block is actually linked to the previous block before it. And if you're a computer scientist, this should remind you a lot of what a, a linked list is. So we'll actually be creating these pointers to the previous block. And the first thing I'm just going to define is a hashing function. And, and if you rem remember my original video series, this is the actual exact same hashing function I, I did before. And so I've kind of just left it here and the code will be provided. But all of all this function does is it takes in some arguments. So I can actually run this here. It takes in some number of arguments if I call calculate hash on hello and then world. And it will produce the SHA-256 hash as a result. Okay, so let's get into defining a block. And in this video, I'm just going to be defining a block, but as you'll see, because a block has a link to other blocks, then that means we're kind of defining a blockchain. But in the next video, I'll be talking more about how we can formalize the blockchain and bring this all together. So the, the, the first thing that we know um, is important in a block is it has a number or identifier. So let's call that um, instance attribute just a number and it will be an integer. And I'm going to keep it a private instance attribute so it can't be accessed from outside of the class. Then what we just talked about was, well, a block should have a link to the block before it. So we're going to call that instance attribute previous, which will be a block. However, consider if we are the very first block, um, we are the genesis block in the blockchain. Well, that wouldn't have a previous block. So we actually need to allow for that, the value of previous to be none. So I'm going to define it as an optional of type block. And then a block, of course, has some data, which we'll say um, is, in this case, in the form of a dictionary. And I'll just make it an optional dictionary so there can be no data in the block. And then a block has a nonce. And someone corrected my pronunciation on this uh, in one of my earlier videos. I was calling it a nuance, I think. And yeah, it's supposed to be called a nonce, apparently. So uh, yeah, that's what we'll call it today. OK, so that's all very good. And now what we want to do is initialize a new block. So when we initialize a new block, we're going to check if the previous block, if the previous block is none. In other words, there is no previous block. We're working with the very first block of the chain. So that means we should set um, the value of number to be zero because we're the first block in the chain. Otherwise, we want to set the value of self.number to be something else. And I'm just going to set it to be one for now, but I'm going to leave a to do here so we can fix that later. We'll set the data. We'll set the previous hash, actually the previous block, I mean, and the nonce. Okay, cool. 
So now we can initialize a new block. Now we want to calculate, we want to be able to calculate the hash of the previous block. As in, if we're talking about this block here, we want to be able to find this, which is actually just the hash of this block. And so it, we already have a link to the previous block, so we can use that. But we want to check if the previous block exists first, because if the previous block does not exist, then we just want to return the genesis hash, which I have defined up here. It's just 64 zeros. Otherwise, we want to return the previous blocks hash. So we want to call self.previous.get hash. Okay. And when we want to calculate the hash, um, all we need to do is call this calculate hash function on all of the data inside of the block. So we just return calculate hash of the self of the block number, the block's previous hash, the block's data, and the block's new nonce. Okay, great. So this is actually a uh, recursive in, in nature here um, because we might be calling get hash and then previous hash. So we're going to keep looping until we get to the base case here or recursing until we get to the base case. So of course we need to define a mining function and that mining function will depend on the number of zeros um, that are required at the start of the hash, which is actually the difficulty of the blockchain. But in term, if we're talking in terms of a block, block doesn't really have a difficulty. It's part of a blockchain which has a difficulty. So we're just gonna call it num zeros for now. And what we wanna do is we wanna loop we want to check the hash of the current block. So we, we want to calculate, we want to use our get hash function. We want to say while the hash of this block, so we, we get the hash, and we want to check the first however many um, characters in that hash. So in this case, we want to check the first num zeros um, characters. And we want to check whether or not that that is equal to zero times the number of zeros. And so we're looping, we're basically going to keep looping as, as long as they're not equal. So like as long as the first num zeros characters of the hash are not equal to all are not all zeros, we keep looping. And what do we do? Well, we just increment the value of the nonce. And so we're changing the nonce until that the, the, the hash is in the correct form. Okay, so I'll define a copy of a block later. And you'll see why this is important because um, of the way we're working with these data structures. But I'm going to skip that for now because that's not important. Same with these get data, get nonce. These are just going to return the private instance attributes that we defined earlier. Okay, and so let's define just a nice um, stir function, the special method in Python, so that we can print out a blockchain because, or a print out a block. Uh, because right now, if we are to run this and we define a new block, I'll say b equals block, and we go print b. Um, it's actually because I haven't set this thing up yet. So if I just comment this out here and I was to run all of this again, B equals block, and then I print B, we, we actually just get a reference to the block's location and memory. But that's not really useful if we're going to print out a block. We kind of want to know what's inside of the block. So we want to define the special stir method so that when we call print, uh, we get a nicer result. And so we'll just return a, um, we'll just return a string and we'll put in there the block number 
So we'll say the block number, the the hash of the block, the um, the previous hash of the block. Um, the data of the block and the nonce of the block. And so that is all we need. And then we just have to insert all of those values. So that's going to be self dot number, self dot get hash, self dot get previous hash, um, a string of the data, and the nonce. All right, cool. And so this is a really long line. So let's just tidy that up a bit. Like this. All right, cool. So now let's try it. Let's print out our block. So if I say B equals block, and then I print B. So now we see we have block zero. This is the hash of the block. The previous hash is the Genesis hash. There's no data and the nonce is by default zero. Great. Let's actually mine this block. Let's see how that works. Let's call B dot mine. And let's mine it with four zeros at the front. Okay, now let's print B. Now take a look at the nonce. We incremented the nonce 17,186 times until we got this hash here with four zeros at the front, which is great. That's exactly what we were looking for. Um, and so I'll, I'll work on these other special methods later so we can simply call like the length of the blockchain and it will give us the, the number of blocks in it, and then also this so we can define an iterable. And so I think that will be it for this video. We've just defined a block now, but it's actually subtle because we can do a lot with what we've just did. Um, let's just go down here. And if I was to run, actually let me just delete this here. If I set the difficulty to four, like as if we have a blockchain, and then I create a block, I'll call it B1 or B0. And we'll say that that's just an empty block. Then I'll create B1 and I'll call block, B1 will be another block, except we're gonna give it, we're gonna give it a link to B0. Um, and then B2 will be another block and we're gonna give it a link to B1 and then B3 another block and we'll link that to B2. And we can mine all of these blocks and the number of zeros we're going to use um, is just the difficulty. So we'll say b0.mine, b1.mine, b2.mine, and b3.mine. Okay, so let's run this. And now I'm going to print um, b0. Okay, that's the first block or the zeroth block. Then I'm going to print b one so you can see okay so here's b1 and note look at this this is great the previous hash right here is the hash of the previous block exactly as as we wanted but what i was talking about earlier was well let's just suppose for a second we change the data in the first block like we we were to kind of hack into it somehow so let's say b0 dot underscore data and i'm accessing a private instance instance attribute which is why it's giving me this underline it doesn't like it um we're gonna change that and let's just say we hacked it um then watch this if we print b0 Okay, the, the data is now hacked. Look, the hash has changed. But also, now let's print B1. Look, the previous hash has changed, which means the hash of this block has changed, which means that if we print B2, that's also affected. So, so they're all, they're, everything's wrong now, and we've messed up the entire blockchain. 
Um, and so in my next video, I'm going to dive into more detail about um, how we'll put together this entire blockchain and clean it up a bit. But right now we actually have um, a lot of it done. And so it's, it's just really about making it nicer to use in terms of the interface and maybe making the this a, just we're just we're really creating a new data type so we want to clean up that data type and make it really user friendly um, but all of the technical details are there so i'll see you in that next video and thanks so much for watching okay bye take care